Uh, pretty thing go to USF And she ain't got a strip just to get a check About to be a nurse in the fall Go to school full time but she never miss a call Prime, what's good, man? What's happening, big dog? I appreciate y'all having me on the show Absolutely, man It's, it's long overdue <laughs> Yes, yes, but you know, we run into each other from time to time I know you, you, you've consistently been working Right Been, uh, you know, I, I'm not even going to say quietly Because probably in your lane it's not as quiet But, yeah. you but it's crime as far as out here, we always know you've been working. Right. Um, you do work with the famed Justice League producers. Yeah, they're my brothers. Yes. You know. And we 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 know them from a different light than the, the industry knows them. We know them as right. home product, mm -hmm. extremely talented, yada yada yada. Now they they've progressed to, to other things and, and known worldwide, of course. Um, but what's what's that experience like? I mean, obviously it's different because you know them personally. Man, it's crazy because even just being an artist when I first really started working and treated this like a career, it was, man, I was intimidated. You know, we're in the studio with Yo Gotti, we're in the studio with Ross, you know, and I'm just trying to match that caliber of bringing them records because the work, the work that they're hearing on a daily basis is like, yo, this is and, nuts. And how old are you at that point when that's happening? Uh, 16, 16, 17. Wow. Yeah. Got so. your feet wet early, early. Man, I've been rapping since I was 11. It's crazy. How I met Coley, I was knocking on doors. I was 11 years old trying to mow yards, and I recorded my first mixtape on a karaoke machine. Wow. And I ran home, and I was like, yo, you got to check this out. <laughs> That's dope. That's dope. So yeah. is, that, is that how they started working with you? Or? Yeah, man, and he was in the process of working on uh, the Takeover album. A lot of people don't know Coley was a, was a rapper back he in was. the day. Badass white boy. Yes. This is a history right here. This is uh, some Tampa knowledge we're dropping yes. on y'all, man. And we just found out off air how far we, we go back, basically, yeah. with mutual friends. Yeah, man. Small city out here, bro. Absolutely. So, so catch us up to speed, man. I know you, you've had a few records over the, the last few years. Um, right. But, but where are you at right now? Uh, I just dropped a mixtape recently called Worth the Wait. I've been pushing the first single off it, uh, Flex, featuring my brother Trevlon. You know, we was doing real well with that, getting a lot of radio spins and stuff like that. So I thought it was time to drop the body of work. You know, so we're just grinding right now, pushing the project. Yeah. And you have a really creative album cover we were talking about. Yeah. Um, inspired by a, a classic album classic, cover. Classic. Uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, The Blood Sugar Sex Magic, Yes, I think? yes. Shout out Rick Rubin, man. Damn, you made a classic really? album, boy. Yeah. Were, you, were you a fan of uh, or inspired by them at all? The, the Not just Rick Rubin, but uh, Chili Peppers? Um, or is more it just creative the wise of the artwork. You know what I'm saying? Um, they I'm always just, had dope <laughs> album covers, too. Yeah, I mean... Red Hot Chili Peppers, everything is on point with them boys, man, they've been. But I'm definitely, I'm a huge fan of Red Hot Chili Peppers, for sure. But they definitely inspired me with the artwork. Now, uh, you know, like you said, you're working with Justice League. They're also working, well, they've kind of morphed into a group. Yeah, yeah. They, it's crazy, though. They changed the name up and did Lazy Americans with it. I thought they should have went with the JL, but, you know, teach is on, huh? But they, they, they've added in some, some guitar players and yeah. a couple of things. And, and have, have you... I know you've sat in on sessions, but have you worked with those guys as a, as a, a collective, like in that form? Um, no, I haven't at the moment. We're gonna do some stuff with Lazy and Prime though, real soon. We was actually just talking about that, so oh. yeah, it's in the works, definitely in the works. Okay. Yeah. Now, I saw you recently when we reunited. I guess we sort of ran back into each other. It was at Tampa Music Conference. Right. Salute to Angel Soto yeah, and Angel, family and team and everybody involved in that. Right. Brought it back this year. Yeah. Um. What did you gain from that experience? Just just some networking and yeah, just networking and knowledge. You know, they had a lot of good. They had a lot of good people on the panel. You know, they had a, the lawyer they had from Miami. He's what? a Flow Riders lawyer. He was spitting knowledge. He's talking about you know copyright issues and the whole nine. Probably the most open lawyer talk at ever. any of these conferences I've ever been to. Really, nah, and he was spitting that real. That's why right. I like. But that's the benefit you get out of you know going to these music conferences. That's why Sometimes it's just gotta show up, right? <laughs> you just gotta get there. <laughs> Anyway, um, but yeah, did you, were you able to link with him or any of those type of people and, um, and do any actual business yet, or just time will tell? Well, I know a couple of uh, a couple of cats that was on the panel already, so you know, right. but I didn't get to link up with the lawyer, man. I I wrote down a couple of things and a couple of connections that he's you know he put out. So, yeah. Right. We'll talk about the the full project first, okay? And we'll get to whatever singles you want to touch right. on, man. I've been working on uh, Worth the Wait since probably 2011. I dropped a couple singles, got radio play with them, and then I just started, you know, working on the tape. But you know, Rook, man, Rook's a hard, so our biggest critic, man. I probably made 150 songs, man, since 2011, probably more than that. Just taking them tape after tape after tape, 
and just he's like, nah, just keep this, scratch that, keep this. It's not good, you know. But it, I can't, you know, I'm not mad at that. Built me, made me the artist I am today. A, a lot of artists don't have that person at all to right. make, you know, to tell you the, the honesty of that's good, that's not. Yeah. But he's a bona fide hit maker <laughs> that knows what he's talking about. For sure. So if he said the record doesn't work, I'd pretty much abandon it and walk away. Right. And I didn't see it back then, man. We, man, me and Cole and the whole, the whole league, we just get in arguments. I'm like, man, I'm ready to go, man. Let's go. I'm ready. Right. I got, I got it. He's like, man, you got one. <laughs> you, you got, got one. one. You need a body. And I, I ain't, I ain't get it back then. Right. But now he's like, you ready, bro? Go ahead. It's, it's all about the next track and the one after that too. Right. You know what I mean? You gotta be able to follow up. A lot up. of artists, they think one will set them straight. Right. But everybody wants to know, what, what are you doing next? Right. So, have you had any of those sit-downs or label talks throughout the last few years? Or? Um, yeah, we was actually in LA for the Grammys and we had a little, we had a little speech, you know what I'm saying, and we were talking about some things, but we're gonna, uh, we're I mean, gonna keep pushing right now and do the independent route. Yeah, and that's that's what I was getting to next. I know that's the way most people are heading now, anyway. Right. Because everything has changed and switched up. Oh, yeah. But um, and and you don't have to answer if you don't have to. But <laughs> have you ever been discussed as being signed full on to Justice League, or has uh, that not come up? Or? Talks of them doing a ma a label deal with a few record labels. Um, I know Interscope. And stuff like that, but I mean that when we were in LA, so I don't know what's going on with that right now. Okay, but right, we sh we're just grinding right now, you know. Word up. Are you are you still pushing Flex, or is it a new single that we're on now? I'm pushing Flex right now, and I just dropped a uh, recent single with Big Homie JT Money. That's my brother right there. Shout out JT Money, man. Oh, uh, he, he's a Pirate Radio uh, alumni and, and alumni. Oh, and, and one of the homies now. Shout out to him. Yeah, shout out JT. Come clean to it. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, we're just, you know, I'm pushing the JT Money record right now, also it's a single, so. And hey, what, is that the Put It In A Life? Yeah, Put It In A Life, man. That's, okay. It's that record, man, Strip Club Anthem. Who, who produced that, the league or somebody um, else? It was co-produced by The Bakery, it's Cats From L.A., and then uh, the Justice League put a couple dudes with them. Yeah. So, so, yeah. I think we're gonna run that real quick while we, I got it over here. Put It In A Life, yeah, by man. Prime, featuring JT Money. Yes, sir. All right, you heard it here. Prime and keep it locked right here. I'ma put it in a life. Say she want it done right. Try to live a Hollywood life. I'ma give her one night. She all up on the bed. Legs in the air.